Hi guys, welcome back to another falconry episode on the falconry side of this channel. First thing in the morning, I've just down myself a load of tea and toast before I start work, but I just wanted to edit a couple of videos or finish off a couple of videos. I need a puffer and this is one of them. So the falconry season has sort of begun. It's the start of September. I know there's people that have been out okay, have been out already. Um, but yeah, the start of September for me is traditionally when I get the birds trained and I'm heading for that October kickoff. Uh, the crispy days of autumn in October. That's long gone. It doesn't often get crispy until after Christmas. The nettles keep growing through the winter. Very different times to the olden days for sure. Now, the boys are going to be getting their Harris Hawks out of the, the molting chamber. I'm going to say the end of September. So we'll start following those in their season. My work commitments and things mean, yeah, end of October before, before I even think about doing anything with Zeus probably nearer the end of November before we get out, to be honest. And that's been a the theme. So I've been running Nicholas Falconry now for four, nearly five years. And I've done less falconry proper in those five years than the previous, I don't know, 30 years. And that's how it goes. Running a falconry centre, running any, any business, self-employed, whatever. It's labour intensive. The winter comes around when your client base is, is dropped off or you close for months, certain months. That's when you've got to do the bulk and the renovating, the, the building projects, repairs and so on. And it's just sat to weigh my falconry season, really, for the, uh, for, the last, for the last sort of four years. It can't go on. So this year, we're going to start late, but we're going to get you lots of action, I'm sure. I've ordered a new bird for 2024. The, the, the 2024 season, if you like, is 2023 right now. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because A, it ruined a surprise, and B... It might not ever be an egg. Who knows? I'm putting my faith in the breeder. There's a deposit down on something a little bit different. Something that I've never flown before. Something a little bit different. That we'll do, excuse me. We'll do my sanity good, proper falconry. Back to training a new bird and putting that effort in. Uh, and it's a bird that will need a lot of game and a lot of effort putting in. So I think that's going to be really good for me mentally. Actually become a real hardcore falconer again and for the channel something that i can help people along the way something interesting less face time more bird time so on that vein excuse me oh, i swallowed all that toast so quick fingers crossed for me i'll keep you informed as that kicks off you know guys a year will go past in a blink of an eye in the meantime mike my friend he's flying a homebred bonelli's eagle Let's kick in with him. Let's check in at the very beginning of May. And I'm hopefully going to bring you a series of this Benelli's Eagle. Now, it's not going to be every week, but as things progress, I'll get out with Mike uh, and others. And I'll hopefully get you some footage of a Benelli's Eagle in action. I've seen Mike's Benelli's Eagles before. I've seen him fly the mother of this bird years ago. Yeah, Benelli's Eagles are something special. He breeds them here in the UK. And if it's something you're interested in, if you go on icarusfulkery.co.uk, go to the contacts page, send an email address to Dave, and I'll put you in touch with Mike if you want to order for next year. Now, he only breeds a couple a year. And of course, if he's lucky, I can tell you now, these Benelli's Eagles, yeah, they're something special. I think of them more for someone that's flown goshawks and wants a new challenge, a new change. They really are more like a goshawk than the Harris Hawk in their mentality, for sure. They need that input, they need game, they need flying, and they need as much interaction as possible. But in the right hands, my God, they are long distance, mega fast, mega agile birds of prey. Enjoy the video, guys. There is gonna be much more bird content as we plow into the falconry season. There's gonna be a glitch where my workload is just too much and, you, and you're gonna have pre-made pre videos slotted in uh, around about the middle of October for a couple of three weeks. The channel will be going, the videos will come out, and then it's going to kick in, and we'll hopefully see some proper falconry with Benelli's Eagles and more. Enjoy the clip, video clip, guys. How old is Benelli's Eagles, Mike? Eagle, Mike? About 18 weeks. So 18 weeks of absolute perfection. Now, 
this particular specimen you could say was completely free or incredibly expensive because this is a project that Mike started how many years ago breeding Bonelli's Eagles Mike? About six years ago. Six years yeah, ago. About He's been very successful off the bat haven't you? So how many do you produce a year? It's usually about two, two isn't it? Yeah, yeah one two. occasionally sometimes two. And projected flying weight around four and a half pounds. Just under about, yeah, about four, five, four, six, a bit look. What you can see with this bird hooded with its wings folded is these humongous feet with humongous talons. Although it does look somewhat like a giant goshawk when you see the feet, but more importantly, these stunningly long wings, you just cannot tell with that bird sitting there that that is not much more than a big hawk. But when those wings open out, that's a pucker eagle, isn't it, Mike? Absolute it's different. It's about five and a half feet, actually, aren't they? And, <laughs> they again. and we're talking, you just can't see until it's fine. But they're not big gossip wings. These are big, long eagle wings, aren't they? Yeah. Unlike the golden eagles, these things do move rapidly over that first short distance, a bit like a giant goshawk. In fact, I've seen Mike fly some of his offspring in the past, and a bit like a goshawk, you do get that thrill of a seemingly incredibly fast wing beat. Beautiful birds. What weight did the males fly at, Mike, roughly? Um, about three plus, about three, two, three, three, if they fit. So a good sized bird, yeah, isn't these it? Are, these are the Africans, so the European breeds a bit larger. Fair enough. But compared to, I will say, temperament-wise, goldies are more like a Harris hawk, and these would say, in a way, if you want to put it to a more commonly available, they're more like a goshawk, aren't they? Yeah, very highly strong, very, very highly strong. Take longer to man, longer to get going. And again, I'd say like a goshawk, if you probably didn't, if you went on holiday for a month, it'd take a bit longer to get right again, wouldn't it, compared yeah. to, say, a goldie? Yeah, if I'm flying, I won't be believing her out. They're too high maintenance. They're very good when they're going. Once they're hunting, they're brilliant, but very high maintenance to get there. And a bird that does well with that interaction, that regular, like yeah, a goss, isn't yeah, it? It's very... getting about three hours, four hours every day at the minute. So there you go. Not a bird to stick on an ornament on your lawn. But if you're after something special, maybe you've flown goshawks for years and you just want to have a complete and utter change, this eagle is one that really, really gets the blood flowing. I've seen Mike's birds chasing hares um, for many years. And yeah, like that goshawk off the fist, these things leave your jaw dropping for sure. They make the golden eagle look more slow and lumbering. It isn't, but the wings on these really give them a, a speedy looking bird indeed. And look at that long tail. You can certainly say, see why their classes are called hawk eagles, can't you? Just like the African hawk eagle. It really is like having a mixture between a hawk and an eagle, isn't it? That tail's long, isn't it? As eagles go. Very manoeuvrable. And they certainly turn on a hair, I think, faster than any golden eagle, for sure. What a privilege. Maybe we'll come back and revisit this bird in the season. And then Mike will be able to show you what these birds really are capable of.